What is going on guys and girls, Josh Chamney here. Thank you all so much once again for tuning in. I hope every single last one of you, regardless of creed, color, career choice, whatever the case may be, I hope each and every one of you are staying safe out there in these very troubling, very disturbing, and very difficult times. And I feel like difficult is putting it uh, minimally, but Regardless, I hope each and every one of you are staying safe with everything that is going on. Um, just, just, just very, very sad. One of the worst years, aside from the Snyder Cut release, and one of the worst years that I can think of in all my years of being alive. But with that being said, there's a lot to talk about, as you can tell by who's on the screen at the moment. So let's get right into it. Now, needless to say, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, Joker is one of the most popular characters in all of mainstream media, whether that's in comics, whether that's on a TV show, animated or live action, and whether that's in a movie like we so graciously saw last year with the epic performance that Joaquin Phoenix gave in the movie Joker. Um, Joker is just one of those characters that people are always excited to see uh usually he's going up against batman and that just adds even more excitement so with suicide squad people were very excited when they learned we learned that jared leto would be portraying joker in suicide squad you know he had just come off of winning an oscar a year or so prior uh jared leto is a magnificent actor in his own right he usually you know, goes method with his performances, and this was all cause for excitement, and then seeing the Comic-Con trailers of BVS and seeing the Comic-Con trailers of Suicide Squad only added to that excitement. I remember seeing the Comic-Con trailer and just feeling so hyped, and at the time, I had the New 52 Volume 1 of Suicide Squad, I think it's the one that has Harley on the cover, don't don't hit the dislike button if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that issue that I had, the graphic novel had the uh, had Harley on the cover. So beyond that, I was just so excited. It had Margot Robbie, Will Smith, you know, Jay Hernandez, Adewale as Killer Croc, and it just seemed that this was going to be, alongside BVS, this was also going to be that movie and was also going to lead to even bigger and better things which we know was going to initially be the case. So, Suicide Squad came out, this, that, and the third happened. Jared Leto, you know, was always vocal about some of his scenes not being shown in the cut of the movie that we, the audience, saw. And it was evident that a lot of his sequences were cut out. We just don't know to, we just didn't know at the time to how much of, the, of a degree his scenes, how, how much of his scenes were left out. And so with 2020 being the year that it is, David Ayer has rightfully, you know, gone to Twitter to reveal a great deal of what Suicide Squad initially was and what his OG cut contains. And it seems that Jared Leto took the worst uh, initially, the worst of the worst of this, uh, you know, unfortunate reshoots, you know, interference from Joff and other people at WB and them wanting to make the movie a comedy. Uh, David has said things like, you know, he took inspiration from Nolan. Uh, yes, Joker was definitely comic accurate. And he even said something that really was eye-opening on Twitter, and he said, I find it incredible, it's still a topic, it's still such a topic five years later. My heart breaks for Jared, he did magnificent work. Most of it remains unseen. And see, guys, this is why I'm not surprised that, number one, hashtag release the air cut is a thing. Of course it's a thing, it should be a thing. And anybody that tells you otherwise is just hating and wrong, and you should ignore them. And I'm not, I'm glad that, you know, he's mentioning all of the pieces that were missing in the original, in the movie that we ended up seeing. Because it all sounds like a very 
very grounded in a more assault on Arkham, something else David has mentioned on uh, Twitter. It sounds very assault on Arkham like, and it sounds a lot more cohesive in terms of storytelling. Now, again, I I like the I like the cut we saw. Don't don't hate me. I like the cut we saw. Um, but I recognize even when I was watching it for the first time, I was like, you know, this is, I, I'm okay with it. It's so poppy and hippity hoppity jiggity funkity bop, but I, I, I'm still okay with it. And I'm, I want to see more of these characters. And it's like when they hired James Gunn, they just said, we want you to keep a few of the characters, but get rid of the rest of them. To me, that's the ultimate disrespect. I mean, you know, we didn't see a lot of Jared Leto, and y'all just did this poor man. I don't know who, but aside from Joff, I don't know who, but y'all just did this poor man like a dog. You know, we haven't seen all of his sequences. We haven't seen all of his storyline. Um, you know, David also revealed that he was going to make a deal with Enchantress towards the end, something I think which would have been epic. And he also recently revealed another pick on IG a few days ago. Shout out to my brother, Bat Skip. Uh, he also revealed a pick on IG a few days ago that also shows that there are some differences in terms of his cut of the movie and the cut that we saw. And anybody that knows anything about Joker knows what he's about, knows he's this psychotic maniacal villain hell bent on bringing chaos and disorder to Gotham so while the scenes that we saw of him were okay to good we didn't see enough of him to make a rightful judgment in my opinion and this is why I feel that Jared Leto was unfortunately mismanaged not by David Ayer but by WB, by the editing people that apparently, you know, messed everything up. And by the people that interfered with what David had planned. And Josh Trank, who <laughs> Josh Trank revealed uh, in an interview a few weeks uh, leading into his movie Capone, how this type of process typically goes. What you'll have is the producer, in his case it was Simon Kimberg, and a bunch of other people that'll shoot other sequences and that'll ask the director, is this okay or is this okay or how do you feel about this? And you either say yes or no. But either way it goes, they'll still go with what they shot and not actually give an actual fuck about what you have, whether you like, you the director like it or not. And so... Based on all that we've heard and seen and what David has revealed, I wouldn't at all be surprised if something similar happened here. Especially given who was in charge at the time. And I sincerely believe that the air cut is up next. I implore each and every one of you that wants to see these characters continue to be seen in the DCEU. I implore you to continue hashtag and release the, the air cut. I implore you to keep letting AT&T and HBO Max know that, hey, we really appreciate y'all allowing Zack Snyder to do his thing with the Snyder cut. But give David Ayer a chance. Give Jared Leto a chance. Let Katana's story be shown as... David Ayer wanted it to be shown because Karen Fukuhara deserves better. Let Adewale not be the stereotypical, oh yeah, turn it to BET killer crop. Because this all sounds really, really promising. And as I said, at the very least, it does sound more cohesive. Not just in terms of Joker. Not just in terms of Harley, not just in terms of Katana or Deadshot. What David has been revealing just sounds a lot more cohesive in terms of a more thorough movie. In terms of it being a more thorough movie. And we've heard mixed things about Jared Leto as Joker. Some people 
like um, some people like me felt like there's a very, very, very good performance there. We just didn't see enough of him. And some people just, you know, as as expected, unfortunately, just want to shit on him and even take this shit to social media and say, oh, you know, David Ayer, he doesn't know what he's doing. Or, oh, you know, David Ayer doesn't know anything. What is he talking about? As if this man didn't, you know, do his research beforehand. And if you look at, uh, if you look at Jared's design, uh, joke, Jared Leto's Joker, uh, you know, costumes, makeup, what have you, it all looks very comic accurate. You know, sure, we haven't seen him with a tattoo or anything like that, but it all looks very accurate to how Joker is depicted in the comics. And some people have even done some side-by-side -side comparisons. That's just how loyal and passionate this fan base is. People have even done some side-by-side -side comparisons showing that, yes, you're wrong. David Ayer did do his research, so you need to actually shut up. Or just say, yeah, okay, I'm sorry, David, in person I tweeted, I was wrong. But these are just the times that we live in. And the big thing with Jared Leto as Joker, you know, that was sadly missing is his interaction with Ben Affleck as Batman. And there's been a lot of discussions about that as well. A lot of rumors thrown our way. Some I wouldn't be surprised if they are true. And some I feel are just, you know, trying to add fuel to the fire, which I'm okay with. But we only saw Batman briefly in Suicide Squad, though David Ayer mentioned Assault on Arkham on his Twitter. And like 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 so many others, I would have loved, 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 loved to have seen Ben Affleck square off against Jared Leto in either movie. Or at least acknowledge each other, you know, aside from the brief interaction that they had in the cut that we saw in theaters so it seems that we also would see a sequence of Batman taking his you know taking his anger out on Joker which would have been epic now whether it's a flashback sequence or whether it's a sequence you know played out we don't know but it seems like that that was also something that was going to be seen in the OG cut. So, with Jared Leto's Joker, there's a lot of missed opportunity, and I don't, I don't at all. Me, this is just me personally, as I like to say from the outside looking in. I don't at all blame Jared Leto or David Ayer. I blame the people at WB that did their dirt, did their 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 BS. And just, you know, force this man to make a movie based on what they saw on social media, based on another studio's success that has absolutely zero to do with DC success. I blame those people. Because I guarantee, <laughs> I guarantee, with the ultimate edition of BVS and with the OG cut of Suicide Squad, the one that David originally wanted us to see, I guarantee we wouldn't be having this discussion. I wouldn't be losing inches upon inches of hairline trying to preach, trying to preach reasons why we need to continue hashtagging and release the air cut. We'd be still talking about these movies because I feel that like BVS and like Man of Steel, Suicide Squad, the OG cut is something that's going to be talked about for years upon years to come, even after it releases. But we also be talking about Jared Leto's performance as Joker. And as I said in a, another video about the air cut, you don't do a filmmaker, an actor, a person who works that hard and is adamant and intent on giving the best performance 
or shooting the best movie he or she can. You don't do a person like that and 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 and, and expect their fans not to be upset. That's just wrong. That's just wrong. And that's just the reality. So the reason I titled this one a micromanaged joker this chapter or this section is not to blame David Ayer or not even to blame Jared Leto because to me they are not at fault. We missed out on something really, really, really intense in theaters. We only saw brief glimpses of it. And most of what we saw was reshoots. But I truly believe that if we keep fighting, if we keep hashtagging, that yes, the air cut will also be released. Because it's no coincidence that David is revealing all these things and it's no coincidence that he's interacting more and talking more in terms of Suicide Squad. I want to see more Jared Leto as Joker. Because I know he's a capable actor, and I feel like his performance would be more heralded in the long run, as opposed to the device divisiveness now. So yeah, hashtag release the air cut, hashtag Jared Leto Joker. You know what you need to do, I know what I have to do. You have been tuned in with Josh Samuel. The greatest of the greatest, Mr. Unpopular Opinion, the person who, if he didn't believe it, wouldn't say it. And with that being said, stay safe, love, and I'm out. Peace.